Our next guest is known as one of the rap pioneers paving the way in trap music, but today he's here to talk about his new book. J. Jeezy Jenkins reflects back on his life in his latest memoir and details the life lessons that he learned to achieve his dreams. In his first book, Adversity for Sale, you gotta believe, Jeezy shares never heard stories of what it took to get off the streets and change his life and career. Jeezy, kind enough to join us tonight, and we today. love it. Yeah. <laughs> so are you right about uh, your your, your upbringing in mm -hmm. uh, the so-called Black Belt of, of Georgia, Hawkinsville. Yeah. So so tell us about uh, your childhood and, and where things started to go a little left. Uh, well, basically, um, <clears throat> I lived abroad. My father was in the Marines. Uh, so I lived in Japan, Hawaii, all these things. And my mother and my father got a divorce. So I had to go back to South Georgia and Atlanta where my other family lived. And it pretty much started from there. I mean, of course, I was doing things uh, before then. But it started from there because it was like a harsh reality of like, okay, now you, you're, you're really in poverty and you got to figure your life out. So that's when the getting in the streets and starting to, you know, do things that kids don't do started for me, for sure. What was it for you? Do you remember the moment where you felt, I have to pivot? I can't continue mm, down this road. Well, I knew when I got in the streets that, it, that I wasn't going to last there. Um, when you start to see a lot of people die around you from a young age until you get into your early adulthood, then you start seeing people that was just standing beside you. Now they're mm -hmm. doing 20, 30 years in prison, and this is like the norm. And then that's when it clicks, like, you, you got to figure something else out, you know. And, and you talk about that, that trauma of, of losing people close to yes. you. And then the impact for, for you and, and really struggling with depression and really yes. at times even contemplating yes. suicide. Yes. What was it that brought you back from the brink of that? Mm. I mean, it was so many different instances. I mean, the suicidal thing happened when I was actually in a boot camp and I was facing the reality of having to go back home to what I just left, which was all this chaos, all this violence, all these things and not having an out. So I had to really get myself to grips like you can do this and you're gonna do that. Uh, the depression thing started when I actually started to get a career and became an artist and I started to have success. Um, but there were so many things going on around me that were trying to pull me back and I didn't understand how to deal with it because I didn't have the, the wording. You talk a lot about failures and, and yes. you do really, I mean, you talk about if you're honest, I mean, it feels like that is what you do yeah. in this book. Yes. Um, is kind of pour out uh, your yeah. heart there. And, and with regard to rap music, you talk about how it was like practice, fail, practice, fail, practice, fail. Yes. A lot of people, they get to a point when they feel like they fail, they're like, all right, I'm not going to do this anymore. Yeah. What kept you pushing through? Oh, uh, what kept me pushing through is the game that I was playing. <laughs> you, you can't just lose you don't turn it into joystick <laughs> it's life or death freedom or the penitentiary mm. so you, you can't stop right and and if you stop then you go back to poverty and you're still stuck with it anyway because you don't have to be doing anything uh to not live your life to the fullest where i'm from you got to believe that you can do this because if you look where i came from it was under the basement right <laughs> and people might feel like i'm on top of the world but i still am not where i want to be so I'm still believing every day, you know. Back in 2001, you founded Street Dreams Foundation. Yes. Tell us about the mission of that nonprofit. Well, I mean, it was basically to um, uh, help the inner city kids, well, the, the kids that was in my neighborhood. Basically, I started getting money from people and adding money with it and buying Christmas uh, gifts and renting out the gymnasium. That's how I started, and I, I did it for years and years and years. And again, you know, just having that financial literacy, I didn't know you can get help, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I was doing this out of pocket. And when I had my success as an artist, I continued to do it. And then I started to, you know, get mentors like Tony Robbins and all these different guys. And they started to show me how to do it on a bigger level and actually get help. And that's where we at with it now. Street Dreams is very near and dear to my heart because it's for any city use. And uh, I feel like who knows them better than me. Jeezy, we thank you so thank you for much me. for sure. your time and, and coming on the show. Want to sure. let uh, our viewers know his book, Adversity for Sale, You Gotta Believe, is out wherever books are sold. And if you or someone that you know might be contemplating suicide, please mm -hmm. contact the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline by dialing 988, or you can go to 988lifeline.org. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.